When people visit Beijing, a must-go place is the Great Wall. There are many sections of the Great Wall in or near Beijing. In today's video, I'll take you to my favorite section. How long is the Great Wall in total? Who built the Great Wall? Why was it built? What kind of structures are there on the Great Wall? You'll have the answers after you watch this video. Hello, I'm Yan Yan. Today, I'm at Jingshanling Great Wall outside Beijing in Hebei province. It's the most beautiful section of the Great Wall, in my opinion. The Great Wall is a very important part of Chinese civilization. And today, I'll tell you its story. The Chinese Great Wall is a military defense system. I've been to similar infrastructures in other parts of the world. For example, the fortress in Sintra of Portugal, which was built against the invasion of the Moors. Similarly, the Great Wall of China was also built against the invasion of the nomadic tribes from the north. First, let me tell you how to differentiate which side is the inner pass and which side is the outer pass. On my right hand side is the outer pass because this side has the buttress and that's the side that's facing the enemy. The panels of Jingshanling section of the Great Wall are very unique. They are 120 degrees angled. This design gives the soldiers a wider view and it's easier for the soldiers to hide. There are holes like this every few meters. Those are for the soldiers to drop big stones to attack the invaders. This design is for drainage. It collects and directs water to flow out of the wall through the hole. There is a saying, Rome is not built in one day, neither is the Great Wall. In almost each dynasty, the imperial court would build the Great Wall or fortify the Great Wall that was left from previous dynasty. Jingshanling Great Wall and most Great Walls you visit in China are part of the Great Wall built in the Ming Dynasty in the 14th century. This is the map of the Great Wall of the Ming Dynasty. It's not completely connected, and there are a lot of branches. According to a survey disclosed in 2012 by the National Cultural Heritage Administration, the entire distance of the Great Wall of the Ming Dynasty is 8,851.8 kilometers. That's more than twice the distance between Los Angeles and New York. A great part of the Great Wall overlaps with the 400 millimeter ISO Hyatt, and that's not a coincidence. 400 mm rainfall is the minimum for agriculture. Therefore, the 400 mm ISO Hyatt is the border of agriculture and nomadic civilizations. A big part of land to the north of this line is the Mongolian steppe, where many nomadic tribes thrived in history. And to its south is traditional Chinese agricultural civilization. In history, nomadic people often invaded the agricultural civilization not only for expanding their territory, but in many cases for surviving. After big storms in winter and shipping cows were dead, the nomadic people usually would advance south to raid the towns in the agrarian zones. In the 14th century, when the Mongol-led Yuan Dynasty was ousted, the Ming Dynasty built the Great Wall on this map as the Border Wall. When the Ming Dynasty moved its capital from Nanjing to Beijing, it built an inner Great Wall near Beijing as an extra layer of defense. The Jingshanling Great Wall is here. The Badaling Great Wall, which most people visiting Beijing would visit, is here. One and a half century later, in the 16th century, after the Mongols raided towns near Beijing several times, a general named Qi Di Guang was called up to strengthen the defense in Beijing. He fortified this section of the Great Wall, which includes the Jingshanling. Many unique designs in the Great Wall in this section were his inventions. 
hollow watchtowers were one of them. Up until General Xi took charge, most previous watchtowers along the Great Wall had been just a platform with a small hut on top for a sentry to take shelter. The hollow watchtowers that General Xi designed allowed soldiers' interior space to live, store food and water, stockpile weapons, and take shelter from Mongol arrows. There are 67 watchtowers in Jinshanling section. Each has a different design. There are ones with one floor, two floors, and even three floors. Some are open style. Others have very dedicated Chinese-style roofs. Most watchtowers were built with brick and stone. Some are with brick and wood. In this watchtower, there are still remnants of wooden posts on the floor. The name of this watchtower is General Tower. Oh. I went up to the second floor of this watchtower. In the second floor of this watchtower, there is a small room. The generals or the soldiers can stay in the room to watch for the Mongols. Right next to the general tower, there is a command center. Well-preserved command centers can hardly be found now. And this one is believed to be the highest level command center in this region. Many people think that the Chinese Great Wall is just a wall with many watchtowers. That's not true. The Great Wall is a whole system of military defense system. There are many other features. For example, this buttress wall that stretches all the way from the main wall. Notice the difference. Both sides of the wall have buttresses because it stretches from the main wall to the outer pass. This picture illustrates the buttress wall from the outer pass angle. The slope of the hill near the buttress wall is relatively flat. It will be easy for the Mongols to climb up the mountain and approach the wall. Therefore, General Qi built a buttress wall here. I'm standing on the buttress wall outside the main wall, which means the Mongols came from that way. When the Mongols came, the Ming soldiers can quickly deploy to the buttress wall and attack the Mongols from their back. Notice there are some other things in this picture. It's this wall, and it's called Horse stopping wall. The reason is similar. The slope is dangerously flat here. A stone wall was built as an extra barrier to stop the horses of the Mongols. The barrier wall is another important feature of the defense system, and you can only find it in Jinshanling section of the Great Wall. In this deep part of the Great Wall, such as this section, the main soldiers are easily exposed to the arrows of the Mongols. So General Qi designed the barrel walls for the soldiers to hide. Bye-bye. There are peepholes in the barrel wall. In case the Mongols breached the wall, the main soldiers could watch the movement of the enemies through the peepholes and seek opportunities to attack. Beacon Tower is a very ancient invention that comes with the Great Wall since the beginning. They were built along the Great Wall as an alarming system in ancient times. If enemies were spotted during the day, smoke would be set. If at night, fire would be light up. When trying to enter this watchtower that looks nothing special from afar, I got some problem. See, there's no entrance. That end. Where's the entrance? Follow me. This way. Look at this arrow. The arrow is the direction for tourists. The entrance is located outside the wall, hidden in a narrow path in the hill. This kind of design could delay the Mongols had they breached the wall. 
The Great War at Jinshan Lin can serve as a textbook not only for defense system but also for architectures and interior design. There are various styles of ceilings in watchtowers. And on the second floor of a watchtower, people found a stone wall with a carved Chinese auspicious beast Qi Lin. Who thought a fortress could be so artistic? This mountain on which the Great Wall was built is called Mount Yan. It's the last defense for Han Chinese from nomadic tribes. If it is lost, then all the land and villages in northern China plain would be exposed to nomads. This 3D picture gives a better angle in understanding the importance of the mountain. In my next video, I'll take you to the place where the Great Wall meets the sea. It is another masterpiece of General Qi. Besides the Great Wall, there is a garrison and a military town for army to station. This place was an important pass in pre-modern China. I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sites of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time at the beach.